Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time tuning in. We want to extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you are blessed and enriched with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. There's much to pray for. We want to continue to pray for our nation and those that are in leadership. We want to continue to pray for our local community and we want to continue to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We want to give you the praise for all things. Father, we pray for our nation and those that are in authority. We pray that you will continue to direct and to steer this nation into the paths of righteousness. Father, we also pray for our local community that you will open up doors of utterance and influence. And we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out your favor, your power, and your presence. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. This is going to be a little bit different here this morning, something that I have felt on my heart for the last couple of days. Let's go to John chapter number five, John chapter number five, and we're going to begin reading in verse number one. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole, of whatsoever disease he had. Now this, this is an incredible passage of scripture for several reasons, but already there is a there is an incredible need that is manifested at uh, Bethesda. It is a place. It is a gathering place, much like the emergency room of a hospital. There's people there with all kinds of diseases. They're halt. They're maimed. They're crippled. And there is one supernatural occasion. This occasion that I'm aware of is not recorded anywhere else in Holy Writ. I have not even heard of this being traditionally something that was reverberated through time as being an actual occurrence. But it's here, it's recorded in the Word of God. And apparently there is an angel that goes down at a particular season and stirs the water. And the very first person that makes it into the water is made whole. Let's continue to read. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. All of this is incredibly important to the story. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. Amazing story. Incredible story. And I've got a unique title for this amazing story. Pastor, that is not what I wanted. Pastor, that is not what I wanted. I've already talked about here just, just opening statements how this is a incredible environment. You have incredible need, a gathering place of people that are halt and crippled and have seemingly incurable diseases. And then you have an act of the supernatural where an angel goes down and stirs the water. Jesus goes to Bethesda 
and it's on the Sabbath. And he focuses on one man. It's full of people. The Bible says that it is full of people. Jesus focuses on one person. This is not just some absolute uh, all-encompassing healing, healing that heals everybody that's there. There is not a proclamation of Jesus' uh, arrival and what Jesus intends to do. Jesus completely understands the dynamics that are at play and focuses on one man that is 38 years old. In a day and an age where the life expectancy of a human being was between 40 and 50 years of age, with this man being impotent and being in this condition all of his life, it probably meant that his life expectancy was closer to 40 years of age than 50 years of age. But nonetheless, Jesus poses a question to a man that has excuses already. Because as soon as Jesus poses the question, wilt thou be made whole? He, he blurts out the reason why he cannot be made whole and why he cannot make it to the pool on time. And everything seems good. Everything seems like a very logical explanation, except that Jesus is not there to give him what he wants. Jesus is there to give him what he needs. And so as this story unfolds, Jesus poses the question. The man gives his excuse. Jesus does not even review his excuse. He does not even review the fact that there's other people standing in line waiting this whole for seasons, waiting for the water to be stirred. Jesus just says, rise, take up thy bed and walk. It is the will of God that we learn to stand on our own two feet, carry our own situations and go forward and have a productive life in God. If Jesus had never gone to the pool of Bethesda and never posed this question, well, it's anyone's guess what might have happened to our friend, but most likely, probably there were people that died, maybe even on a daily basis that were there. It was a place where people had incurable diseases and incurable situations and everybody had a story. I'm not saying that they felt sorry for themselves, but it was a, it was a gathering place. It was a, it was a place where people gathered at the sheep gate. It stunk. It's where the sheep took their baths before they went to market. And so it wasn't a water of, it wasn't a pool of water of crystal clear water where you could see the bottom. It was discolored. It was discolored because the sheep bathed there. And so Jesus comes to give a man that's in the latter chapters of his life an opportunity to start a new life. And that's to stand on his own two feet to carry the affairs of his life and go in a brand new direction. But pastor, that is not what I wanted. This is echoed in Acts chapter number three at the time when it was a time to go uh, to the temple of the synagogue for prayer. We find Peter uh, and John making their way to prayer. And Peter fastens his eyes on a cripple, a cripple that is laid at the gate beautiful every single day. There were the others that took the responsibility to take this man there. And he had a singular tinkling coin in a tinkling cup. And he was asking alms of all those that went into the temple. But Peter, fastening his eyes on him, said, look on us. You know the story. Jesus took him by the hand, or Peter took him by the hand. A miracle took place. And the man leaping up gained strength in his ankles, strength in his legs, went into the temple for the very first time in his life, leaped, maybe ran the aisles, jumped, shouted, praised God. 
But at the outset of this, Peter let him know, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. You know, our culture has created this dynamic that the church is just a storehouse where we're here to give to all of the financial needs of everybody in our community. There's entire denominations that have been raised with that one virtue in mind that people know that if I call a particular denomination or a particular church, I'm going to get exactly what I need. Here in this stunning example in Acts chapter number three, Peter did not give the lame man what he wanted, but he was used of God to give him what he needed. There's no doubt all kinds of people in congregations sitting from shore to shore that are lame, that are wounded, that are bruised, that are battered, that have been abused. They all have a story. They all have their particular story, their particular situation where they're waiting for the supernatural. Could it be that this coming Sunday is your day and you're not there to get what you want, but God is there to give you what you need, where you will learn to stand on your own two feet. You will learn to walk and carry your affairs of your life. And in our, in our friend's uh, example in Acts chapter number three, he doesn't just casually walk into the temple. After God does what only God can do, we have a demonstration that immediately gets under the skin of the religious leaders. Oh, when God does what only God can do, God expects you to share with others what has happened. Pastor, that's not what I'm asking for. It's not what I wanted. Just leave the man of God alone. He's trying to bring you to a place where the miraculous takes place and you will stand on your own two feet. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here today. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.